Good morning and welcome to St. Andrew on this first Sunday after Easter. Um, I do not have any announcements, if there are any from the congregation. I don't know where it is. Okay. We had a cleanup day Saturday and most of the outside windows got washed. If you look out this side, you can see out. If you look <laughs> out that side, you see dirt. <laughs> um, next weekend, rain or shine, we're going to do the inside of the windows. So any help would be appreciated. Thank you. Good morning. I think we've got all of the cards for people who are here. Um, Barb's been handing them out to people. Um, but if you are at home and you are watching on Zoom and you have not, you're local and you haven't gotten your cards to send to people um, during the Easter season, if you would stop by the church sometime this week and pick them up, anything that's left at the end of the week, I'll mail out to people. So you should be expecting to get some mail from different members of the congregation in the coming weeks and sending some letters out as well. Thank you. <clears throat> there, there is one thing. Um, the um, Easter plants that are here are available to take. Um, if they're still here after today's service, they'll be either planted or disposed of in some way. Thank you. Reverend Keith Bowie. <clears throat> well, good morning. I was listening uh, to the TV earlier this morning, and the weatherman said, this is a good Sunday to stay in and do nothing. And I was uh, screaming at him, uh, don't say that. Don't say that. Uh, but we're glad you're here. And uh, I hope everyone had a great Easter. And now we look forward to the next uh, four or five Sundays in Easter tide. Uh, these are these scriptures that uh, we deal with during this time are among my most favorite. Uh, they are great to preach on, and I and for you as a congregation to to meditate on. So we look forward to that. It's a joy to be with you again uh, in worship. And now let us uh, listen as uh, Debbie leads us in our prelude as, as we uh, prepare our hearts and minds for worship.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. God of all mercy and consolation, come to the help of your people, turning us from our sin to live for you alone. Give us the power of your Holy Spirit that we may confess our sin, receive your forgiveness, and grow into the fullness of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and one another. Gracious God, have mercy on us. We confess that we have turned from you and given ourselves into the power of sin. We are truly sorry and humbly repent. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things we have done and things we have failed to do. Turn us again to you and uphold us by your Spirit so that we may live and serve you in newness of life through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. God, who is rich in mercy, loved us even when we were dead in sin and made us alive together with Christ. By grace, you have been saved. In the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. Almighty God, strengthen you with power through the Holy Spirit, that Christ may live in your hearts through faith. Amen. Amen. Our hymn is, Come You Faithful, Raise the Strain.
is risen. He is risen indeed. <laughs> the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. suffer death on the cross for our redemption. And by his glorious resurrection, you delivered us from the power of death. Make us die every day to sin, that we may live with him for the joy of the resurrection. Through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. The first reading this morning is from the book of Acts, chapter 2. A reading from Acts. Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed the people. You that are Israelites, listen to what I have to say. Jesus of Nazareth, a man attested to you by God with deeds of power, wonders and signs that God did through him among you, as you yourselves know. This man handed over to you according to the definite plan and foreknowledge of God. You crucified and killed by the hands of those outside the law. But God raised him up, having freed him from death because it was impossible for him to be held in its power. For David says concerning him, I saw the Lord always before me, for he is at my right hand, so that I will not be shaken. Therefore my heart was glad, and my tongue rejoiced. Moreover, my flesh will live in hope. For you will not abandon my soul to Hades, 
or let your Holy One experience corruption. You have made known to me the ways of life. You will make me full of gladness with your presence. Fellow Israelites, I may say to you conf confidently of our ancestor David, that he both died and was buried, and his tomb is with us to this day. Since he was a prophet, he knew that God had not sworn with him an oath to him that he would put one of his descendants on his throne. Foreseeing this, David spoke of the resurrection of the Messiah, saying, He was not abandoned to AIDS, nor did his flesh experience corruption, which Jesus God raised up, and of that all of us are witnesses. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I'd like to invite uh, the children to come forward for children's time. <clears throat> well, good morning. Let me ask you, uh, do you know what, what this represents or what it is? Pardon? That's, that's right. That's a fish. And um, some of the very first disciples that Jesus called were fishermen. We think of, we think of Peter and uh, his brother Andrew and James and his brother John. Uh, the first four disciples were, were all fishermen. And this, uh, this fish uh, symbol um, um, became very uh, much in use after, after Jesus was resurrected. He spent about 40 days here upon earth and then he ascended to be with God. And then almost immediately afterwards, uh, Christians uh, began to be persecuted. Now, let me stop and ask you, you know, that's a big word. What does persecution mean? Well, it, it, is, it is to treat somebody very cruelly. So when you treat somebody very cruelly, uh, we say you're persecuting that person. And Christians were persecuted by uh, the government. Um, when was the last time you thought of going to church is dangerous? <laughs> by and large, uh, we don't persecute uh, people who come to church anymore. There are instances of that happening in our world, but uh, by and large, uh, we're free to come here, you know, to this house of worship, and, and the government does not persecute us as they did early on in, in Roman times. This uh, symbol became kind of a code. Um, the, the early Christians had to meet in secret because they weren't allowed to, to gather openly. So they met in secret, and oftentimes they met in caves or what we would call catacombs. And even today, you can, you can visit some of the catacombs. Um, if you go to Rome, you go under the city, there are these huge caves where Christians uh, would hold their meetings in secret. And on the walls of those catacombs or caves, you'll find lots and lots of these symbols, the, the fish. So 
when a Christian would meet another Christian, they, of course, they didn't know whether they were Christians or not. So that sometimes they would draw, they would draw the symbol in the sand to let the, the other person know that they were a Christian. And that's how they, they would communicate. Um, the fish symbol you can even see today. Uh, sometimes I see uh, this symbol on the bumper sticker of a car. And that tells me that the person in the car is a follower of Christ. That person is a Christian. So... Um, you're very, you're very correct. That's the fish symbol, Genevieve. And uh, now you know. Whoever, whoever displays this, yeah, it's it's very easy to draw, and that's what they would do in the sand. They would draw it in the sand and let others know that they were Christians. Well, thank you for coming up. Let us uh, before you go. Let me have a little prayer with you, okay? Thank you, God, for the amazing story of Easter. Jesus is alive in a new way. Alleluia. Amen. Okay. Thank you. Second reading this morning is from 1 Peter. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. By his great mercy, he has given us a new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead and into an inheritance that is imperishable, undefiled, and unfading kept in heaven for you, who are being protected by the power of God, through faith for a salvation ready to be revealed in the last time. In this you rejoice, even if now for a little while you have to suffer various trials, so that the genuineness of your faith, being more precious than gold, that throw perishable is tested by fire, may be found to result in praise and glory and honor when Jesus Christ is revealed. Although you have not seen him, you love him. And even you, though you do not see him now, you believe in him and rejoice, indescribably and glorious joy, for you are receiving the outcome of your faith, the salvation of your souls. The word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel according to John, the 20th chapter. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, who was called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, 
unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands and put my finger in the mark of the nails and my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were again in the house and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered him, my Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing you may have life in his name. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise you, Lord Christ. May be seated. Blessings to you on this Sunday and Easter time. <clears throat> Once again, we have a rich story from John's Gospel. Last Sunday, we celebrated the resurrection. Now, on this Sunday, after Easter, we are given the opportunity to reflect further on the meaning of resurrection. Easter is about the defeat of death and evil by God's miraculous power, the triumph of life and hope. Now, on Easter evening, we learn that the resurrection is also about a God who forgives. On Easter evening, Jesus enacts forgiveness among his own followers. Before we get to what happened on Easter evening, let's back up a bit. Thursday and Friday did not go well for Jesus' 12 best friends. On Thursday evening, around the table in that upper room, they all took turns claiming that though everybody else might forsake him, they would all stand by him in case things got ugly. Then, before the night was over, the soldiers came. Jesus was arrested, and they all fled into the dark. We wish that Judas had been the sole betrayer, but no. By their cowardice and flight, they all betrayed Jesus in his hour of need. On Friday, when Jesus was tried and beaten within an inch of his life. They only heard about it. None of them were close by. None of them helped Jesus carry his own cross up to Calvary. And when they crucified and tortured him, only a couple of them stood by at the foot of the cross. So you can well imagine the mood of the disciples by Easter evening. It is true that a couple of them had gone to the tomb in the pre-dawn darkness. Mary Magdalene thought that someone in one last act of indignity had stolen the body of Jesus. Peter and the other disciple the disciple whom Jesus loved, he is not mentioned by name, but most think he was John. Uh, Peter and John did not come to any immediate conclusions, but returned home to mull things over. They fear the possibility that the Romans now may be on the prowl for them, as well as the other followers. So they huddled behind locked doors in fear and terror. 
Then, wonder of wonders, Jesus came and stood before his frightened disciples. The first thing Jesus says to them is, peace be with you, a common Jewish greeting. I've always thought it to be rather remarkable that Jesus went to them in the first place. One might justly expect Jesus to rebuke them for their infidelity, for all the things just mentioned that had happened on Thursday and Friday. It's one thing when your enemies betray you. It's quite another thing when your friends do it to you. That's like getting punched in the stomach, not once, but twice. And for their part, surely it's painful for the disciples to see Jesus standing among them, to be shown the holes in the hands and feet of the risen Christ as bodily reminders of what he had been through on the cross. It must have been painful because of their own complicity in that dark conspiracy against Jesus. Once Jesus identifies himself and shows them his scars, he does three things in quick succession. Number one, he commissions his disciples. Number two, he breathes upon them the Holy Spirit. And number three, he authorizes them to forgive sins. These are all rather amazing gifts and empowerments to be bestowed on those who had disappointed Jesus and who are now found to be behind locked doors, shaking from fear. We remember that from the cross, Jesus had prayed, Father, forgive them. Presumably, he was speaking to those who actively crucified him, the soldiers, the howling mob, the priests, and the government officials. Now, on Easter evening, Jesus enacts forgiveness. Jesus himself becomes a parable of grace and forgiveness among his own followers. <clears throat> this Sunday, the Sunday after Easter, the church sometimes refers to as Low Sunday. And that's how it often feels. Easter was grand and glorious. But now, a week later, we find ourselves at some distance from the Easter joy. And we wonder, was it all a dream? What difference does Easter make? Well, Easter evening demonstrates that the truth of the resurrection is not only that a dead, crucified body was raised from the dead, there's more to it. The resurrected Jesus in all of his glory returned to us. His return to us became a bodily, miraculous demonstration of the depth of his forgiveness for us. By his stripes we are healed, declares Isaiah. When we need help, Jesus is able to, quote, sympathize with our weaknesses, says the letter to the Hebrews. A major way he helps is by continuing to return to us and to forgive us so that we might again follow him. 
I've said it before and I'll say it again. Forgiveness is at the very heart of the Christian faith. I know, I know, it's hard. For one thing, Jesus is demanding. When you're baptized, you or your sponsors make promises, that is, vows to be loyal to Jesus, to follow him wherever he leads you, to work for him, to, to pray and trust him. Very few of us keep those baptismal vows. And yet on Easter evening, he gave us his spirit and told us to go out and to forgive sin. He commissioned us to go into the whole world in his name and preach and enact the gospel. Who among us is worthy of such an assignment? And for another thing, we are all too human. We are not angels. We fail to keep the allegiance that we promised. So what hope is there for us in our weakness and our failing? Well, it's the hope of Easter evening. You began to see the picture now. It's the hope that the same Christ who returned to those who forsook him in his greatest hour of need will not forsake us. He returns, he shows himself to us and breathes anew his spirit on us. There's no vow that you can break that he cannot forgive. If he raised and returned and forgave his disciples, he can forgive anybody. And when you know that in your heart, not just in your mind, but when you know that in your heart, that God is a God of love and forgiveness, it empowers you, it emboldens you to go out and keep your commitments and honor your promises. Now, Christ doesn't expect any of us to do any of this alone. Therefore, he breathes upon us his spirit. He commissions us. He gives us what we need to succeed at this thing called discipleship. That Easter evening could be said to be the birth of the church. I know, I know, we celebrate the birth of the church on Pentecost, right? But I think I could make a strong argument that on Easter evening, those forgiven losers and deniers and betrayers, they all coalesced around each other and around Jesus. They joyfully received the Spirit they left that locked room and went on to courageously spread the gospel to the whole world. That fits my definition of the church, namely a bunch of people who make public promises to serve Jesus and witness to him, who sometimes stumble and backslide, but who nevertheless both receive and extend forgiveness to others, and then pick themselves up, take a deep breath, and follow Jesus wherever the path may lead. That's the church. That's us. Our great hope in life and in death is that the same risen Christ who returned and forgave his disobedient first disciples will continue to return and forgive us. So again, happy Easter. Jesus has returned to us. He said peace to us. He breathed upon us, giving us the spirit. 
and he now sends us forth. Amen. confess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. United in the hope and joy of the resurrection, let us pray for the church, the world, and all in need. You call your church to witness to your salvation. We give thanks for all theologians, preachers, and teachers who proclaim your gospel. Equip all the baptized who share the joy of the resurrection in all we say and do. Risen Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. You bring abundant life throughout creation. The green blade rises in all creation greets the resurrection dawn. Preserve vineyards and orchards, and those who tend to them. Feed us with the fruits of creation. Risen Lord, in your mercy. Amen. You show your steadfast love without regard to borders, barriers, or human-made divisions. Infuse your justice in every nation of the world, especially Ukraine, Syria, Turkey, and the Middle East, that all experience the peace that only you can give. Risen Lord, in your mercy, you anointed your Son with the Holy Spirit and with power. 
Encourage us by his example in our ministries of healing, care, and outreach. We pray for all who are sick or hospitalized, and for all health care workers who care for them. Risen Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. You have put gladness in our hearts. Inspire musicians and dancers to rejoice with songs of victory. Bless the music ministries of this congregation and all who foster our assembly song. Risen Lord, in your mercy. O oh God of healing, we lift before you particular situations or people aloud, silently, or by chat. Risen Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. As you have raised Jesus from the dead, you show us your resurrection promise with your holy ones who have sung your praise. Free us from fear and empower us to go and tell the good news. Risen Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Rejoice in victory of Christ's resurrection. We lift our prayers and praise to you, almighty and eternal God. Through Jesus Christ, our risen Lord, The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. Please share Christian greetings with those around you. Peace, everybody. Peace, everybody. Peace, Tim. Everyone can unmute and say peace. Welcome peace. to St. Andrews. Good Thank morning. You, Mary. Peace be with you. Peace. Hi, Brenda. Nice to see you. Haven't seen you it's for a nice while. Nice to see you, Brenda. Hi, Sam. Lynn. Peace, everyone. Peace be with Peace, you. Peace, Lynn. Hi, Lynn. Peace, Art. Peace, Lynn. Peace be with you. We're all family here together, even though yeah. we're on Zoom. That's yeah. right. That it's is nice true. to see faces. Yeah. Yes. It is nice to see faces, Mary. Indeed, it is. <laughs> Happy Easter. Peace, Steve and Mary. Let us continue with the offering.
Let us pray. Gracious God, in this meal you offer your very self. We give thanks for these gifts of the earth. In the breaking of this bread, reveal to us the risen one. In the pouring of the wine, pour us out in service to the world. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them unto the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. It is indeed right and our duty and our joy that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, for the glorious resurrection of our Savior, Jesus Christ, the true Paschal Lamb, who gave himself to take away our sin, who in dying has destroyed death and in rising has brought us to eternal life. And so with Mary Magdalene and Peter and all the witnesses of the resurrection, with earth and sea and all their creatures, and with angels and archangels, cherubim and seraphim, we praise your name and join their unending hymn We give you thanks, <clears throat> Father, through Jesus Christ, your beloved Son, whom you sent in this end of the ages to save and redeem us and to proclaim to us your will. He is your word, inseparable from you, through whom you created all things and in whom you take delight. He is your word, sent from heaven to a virgin's womb. He there took on our nature and our lot and was shown forth as your son, born of the Holy Spirit and of the Virgin Mary. He, our Lord Jesus, fulfilled all your will and won for you a holy temple. He stretched out his hands in suffering in order to free from suffering those who trust you. He is the one who handed over to a death he freely accepted in order to destroy death, to break the bonds of the evil one, to crush hell underfoot, 
to give light to the righteous, to establish his covenant, and to show forth the resurrection, taking bread and giving thanks to you, said, take and eat, this is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering then his death and resurrection, we take this bread and cup, giving you thanks that you have made us worthy to stand before you and to serve you as your priestly people. Send your spirit upon these gifts of your church gather into one all who share this bread and wine fill us with your holy spirit to establish our faith in truth that we may praise and glorify you through your son jesus christ through whom all glory and honor are yours almighty father with the holy spirit in your holy church both now and forever Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Come and know Christ, broken and poured out for you. Maybe see. Take this is the break. 
speak and drink the blood of Christ shed for you. The bread of life. The blood of Christ shed for you. This is the bread of life. Take and drink the blood of Christ shed for you. This is the bread of life. This is the blood of Christ shed for you. This is the bread of life. Let all who are able please rise. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Amen. Almighty, <clears throat> Almighty and eternal God, the strength of those who believe and the hope of those who doubt, may we who have not seen have faith in you and receive, receive the fullness of Christ's blessings, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. 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 The God of all who raised Jesus from the dead, bless you by the power of the Holy Spirit to live in the new creation. Amen. 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 Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
Alleluia. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. Go in peace. Serve the risen one. Thanks be to God. Thank you.